And good morning, Muragur Avotai, we're continuing on Shukharuch Rachaim, Hilchot Tvila, and Simon Sadi Gimel, Sif Dalit, Kuf Chavav Mudbet of the regular Prince of Mishnah Burah. Maran writes, Haosek Besorche Sibur Keosek Patorah Dam is a very important Sif. Maran writes, if you are dealing with the needs of Sibur, it is tenth amount of someone that's learning Torah, and hence, Perush Leinyan Laamod Mitocholit Palil. You could stand from, like, jump from doing Sorchet Sibur right into Tfilah. Just like we mentioned, that when you want to start Tfilah, you don't want to be um, lightheaded right beforehand, schmoozing, schok ve or things that disturb a person's mind. You want to learn Torah, like Halacha Psukah, something that makes a person happy. So says Maran, this is also considered a tremendous joy. You know what the schut it is to be doing sorche tzibur. Like this by itself is like this sif is, is is a tremendous musar haskel. The people sometimes it, it comes comes across as a burden. Some it's something that you have to do. Okay, so you have to know there's nobody else there to do it. So I'll I'll pick it up. But lemaaseh it's schut. To do sorche tzibur and says Marash Kharuch, this is such a happy thing to do that it could be an alternative for learning Torah for the Inyan Laamod Mitocho Leit Palil. In order to daven right after sorche tzibur because that's such a joy. A person is ecstatic to be able to be zoche to, to do sorche tzibur is a tremendous thing. So says the Shukharuch, Vyesh Mefarashim, there are others who. In, describe this a little bit differently. The Bet Yosef, um, in the name of Rambam, brings this as well. Not necessarily um, that you jump from doing Sorchet Sibur to davening, but rather if you are busy with Sorchet Sibur, you don't even have to daven. You don't have to stop Sorchet Sibur if there's nobody else to do it. And you're doing it for free, it's not your business. You're doing it for um, help to the tzibur, you are patur from tefillah. Now, most of the achronim passing like this shita, that you don't have to stop sorche tzibur even for tefillah. Let's read the Mishnah Buram. Le'inyan la'amod, the first shita that Maran brings over here in, in Sif Dalit, that you, you could be doing sorche tzibur and immediately stand in tefillah right away, this that Yerushalmi really says this, and Maran brings it from Yerushalmi, we're not talking about something that, imagine, Sorche Tzibur would be like you know, going to a federal uh, court uh, in order to get somebody off the hook or what, what not, and you're in the middle of uh, the case and your brain is completely fried with all the things that are going, this guy is standing there for life prison, imprisonment or what not. Um, not type of that that type of thing that t completely takes over a person's mind and and you can't have kavan afterwards we're talking about things that it's okay sibur is the need of the community and you're busy with them but it's not something that that uh takes a lot of uh gigabytes of your your brain power as you're involved with them it's just that something that needs to be done and you're doing it and you stand in tefillah you could still dive in proper with proper kavana without being disturbed and distracted so there it says, According to this shita, you cannot um, stop even tefillah with tzibur because you're busy with sorche tzibur. And certainly, if you're afraid that if you don't daven right now because your mind is busy with sorche tzibur, you're going to lose this month filah and completely not be able to daven, of course, then you're rasha, you're allowed to daven, stop and daven, even though that your mind is not 100% clear, you don't want to lose the tefillah. Now, the second shita in, in Shukharuch, that most of the Akronim Paskin like, is, even if the zman tefillah is going to pass, if you're the only one that could do this, and you're osek besorche tzibur be'emunah, you're doing it not because it's your business, not because you, but you're doing it because it's the need of the, the communities, the need of the Sibur. 
אם אין שם מי שישתדל אל ההוא, אם אתה לא רק אחד, אתה יכול לעשות את זה, אם אתה לא יכול לעשות את זה, זמן תפילה. מרן חידה רייץ, שאתה לא יכול להיות נגטיב ובעד על זה, כי אתה חושב שאתה לא יכול לעשות את התפילה בסיבור. לא, זה מרן חידה, השם, אתה יודע, הוא מתכוון לך כאילו אתה יודע בציבור. You know, par excellence with all the kavanot of Ari Hakadosh and Rasha. Hashem considers for you as though you davened and you davened properly the kavanah, which is a tremendous thing. This is in uh, in Hasdei Avot. The Chida writes this, and it is, again, this is like the Mishnah says in Pirkavot. Mishnah in Pirkavot says if you if you're doing sorche tzibur, if you're doing. Um, כל העמלים עם הציבור, everyone that's working hard for the need of ציבור. And again, רבותיי, people who've been involved with it, they know sometimes it's um, very not appreciated, sometimes it's uh, not seen, people don't know about, you know, 90% of the things that go behind the scenes for סורכי ציבור, you know, in order to accomplish one little thing, you have to work so hard, and nobody necessarily sees those hard works. עמלים עם הציבור. But says the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot, it says, don't worry, because Neiman, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, is is trustworthy to give the schar of those people who who, who work hard with the tzibur. And Malei Ani Alechem says the Mishnah in Pirkei Avot, schar harbe keilu asitem. So it says Maran Chida based on that, keilu asitem that even if you miss a mitzvah, miss miss the filah with tzibur, because you osek besorche tzibur beemuna. מעלה אני עליכם כאילו עשיתם. השם says, I consider for you as though you did it. even though that you didn't get to act at the end do the, the mitzvah, do the tefillah בציבור because you were um, busy with the needs of the community. מעלה אני עליכם כאילו עשיתם. that means השם considers the schar for you as, as though you did it, says מרן חידה. Now, Mr. Burra says, ואין צריך להתפלל מנחה שתיים. Imagine, If you missed Shaharit, because you were do, dealing with Sorchei Tzibur, and the time of Shaharit passed. So you missed the Vila. You, you couldn't daven Shaharit. Now, do I daven Mincha twice? Because whenever you are Anus, and you can't daven, if a person deliberately says, you know, I don't have patience for Shaharit right now, I don't feel it. It's a, such a, such a klala in this generation. People say, I don't feel it. What do you mean you don't feel it? This is uh, the Avdut, the Eved HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But anyhow, so if a person says, then you cannot daven Tefillat Tashlumin, because you're a Poshea. You're not Anus, but if a person was Anus, you couldn't. Like, you know, he, he was on medication, he woke up after his month, Tefillat Rachman Litzlan. Didn't work. So he was Anus. So then he could daven Tefillat Tashlumin. He should daven Tefillat Tashlumin. He davens Min Chashtayim. So here, he was Anus. Right? He was dealing with Sorche Tzibur. He couldn't daven. Does he have to daven Mincha Shtayim twice Mincha now or not? Tzalacha. Says the Mishnah Bura, no. You don't even have to daven Tashlumin because it's not that you were Hayav to daven and you were Anus, you couldn't daven. That's not the Pshat. The Pshat is you were Patur from Tefillah at the time of Shacharit. At the time of Shacharit, you're doing Osek Be Mitzvah, Patur Mina Mitzvah. You're dealing with the Sorchei Sibur, do I have to daven? No. Once you don't have to daven, it's not that you had the Chiyuv and you were forced not to do it. You didn't have the Chiyuv altogether. So therefore, once at the time of Shaharit you were Patur, it doesn't kick in after, the, after you finish with Sorchei Sibur. So, oh well, now you could daven Tfilat Tashlubin twice. No, it doesn't work like that. Says the Mishnah Bura, "Ve'ein tzarich leitpalel min chashtayim b'shvil tashlumei shaharit." You don't have to do tashlumin b'chlal she'kevan she'b'shat chovato ayah patur mimena. At the time of the chiyuv of the filat shaharit, you were patur from it, and hence minadin en tzarich tashlumin kalal. You don't need tashlumin at all. And this is not just the Mishnah Bura saying this. <coughs> this is, or the Tzion says it, Kav Chaim says it, from the Tshuva of Ben Ishchai and Rappe Alim seems the same way that you're, if you're patur in the time of, of Tfilah, <coughs> you don't need Tashlumin at all, and therefore um, you, will be, you will be off the hook completely. Now, 
Chacham Obadiah writes, Lemaaseh, at the end of the day, there's machloket. There are those who say that you have to do tashlumin, even though that you were patur at the time. So says Haravadia, this is something very big in Chacham Obadiah. He says this in many, many scenarios. He says, look, you have an option to satisfy both of the poskim, both of the camps. How do you do that? You daven betnai shel nedava. In other words, when time comes time for mincha, you daven one, one tefillah for mincha. When you finish Oseh Shalom Bim Romav, then you start another Shomar so We're going to learn the details of tefillah tashlubin later on. You start another Shomar Asri, and prior to starting, say Hashem, I understand this machlok at the poskim over here, whether I have to daven tashlumin for shaharit that I missed or not. Maybe I don't have to because I was completely patur. So therefore, I'm going to order an entire Shemona Asre. If I am chayav to do tashlumin for shaharit, then this should be my tashlumin. But if I'm not chayav, then this should be a tefillah nedava, a voluntary extra tefillah. And you should be mahadesh davar. You should you know, focus on something, ask for something that usually you don't ask for. Hence, justifying an extra voluntary tefillah. Why are you doing just a voluntary tefillah? You want to ask for something that is unique, something that you don't usually focus on. So that we call tefillah betnai shel nedava. It's not a tefillah nedava. It's a tefillah al tenai shel nedava. It's unconditioned that maybe this is nedava, maybe this is obligation. So this way, Chachamadi says, even though that we pass in your patur, the Mishnah Bura in your patur, the Rabbi Alim pass in your patur, the Ola Tzion pass in your patur, the, the, the Kafachayim pass in, the Maaseh, Mikaratin says, Chachamadi, you don't have to. But because there are those who say you should, you could satisfy everyone by davening an extra tefillah after Mincha, but tonight shall nedava, on condition of, of nedava, and that would satisfy everyone. So that basically is, Conclusion of Siman Tzadi Gimel. Now we're going to start Siman Tzadi Darat Bezrat Hashem. Uh, to begin with, I mean, if you can postpone that task or whatever it is, then obviously you're not patur necessarily. It's if you absolutely can't postpone the time. Right? Yeah, Sorchet Sibur, correct. That's a very good point. Sorchet Sibur, if they are not time bound, if they could be done anytime, so you could take easily, take a 45 minute hour off and David Shaharit like a mensch, and then go back and nothing burns, yeah, of course, that's the no-brainer. Of course, they, you have to do that. But if you're talking about something that is time-pressing, you have to, you know, you have to do it, and you have to do it well, and you have to do it fast, and there is nobody else. It's not that you have somebody that already has Davin that could do that, or someone that's patur from davening that could do that. So if you're the only person that has to be done now, then that's, what, that's what's called Sorchet Sibur, of course. Um, so says Maran, this is um, Siman Tzadi Dalit, is the direction of Tefillah. The way you remember it is Tzad. Tzad means direction, right? Tzadi Dalit is the direction in Tefillah. That you have to direct your, 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 uh, your body towards Eres Israel, towards Kodesh HaKodashim, as we're going to see. This is something very interesting actually nowadays because not only for those the, the Dota Mizrach that mostly come from Eastern countries, uh, Middle Eastern countries, which Eretz Israel is normally speaking to their um, West. And all, all of us remember, I remember growing up, the Hechal was not in the East. Mizrach was not, there's not the Mizrach. There's Hechal. Hechal was in Ma'arav, actually. It was in, in, the, in the West. All the Syrians, the, the Bukharians, the Georgians, the uh, the Turkish, the Afghanis, the, all, all those, those cities and countries, they, their hechal was to the west, right? But it's not only that, now, nowadays we, we, we appreciate that, but nowadays we travel often. And people go to Eretz Yisrael, Baruch Hashem, go to other places in the world, uh, Far East and so on, and it is important to note that it's not just davening or where is East, or where is west? You go to Eretz Israel. It's not east or west. It depends where in Eretz Israel you are. It could be east. It could be west. It could be north. It could be south. The direction you you daven, and we're gonna explain that um, just just in a moment. Now, very interesting humorous story that happened. There's this fellow. You know, some people they, they always think they know best. You know, everyone comes across this interesting individuals. Uh, um, and uh, there's this this fellow that 
had come with a green card to the United States uh, and spent some time here with his kids and then went back to Iran afterwards. And the uh, first Friday night comes. And so people during the Chadodi, the Chadodi, everyone stood up and they said the Chadodi because Kabbalah Shabbat already, Al Pi Kabbalah. It's not just by by boy b'shalom, but already from Mizmor to David, you have to stand towards towards west, and it has nothing to do with where the echal is. If Shabbat comes from west, your echal is in west, is in east, is in south, doesn't make a difference. But in Iran was easy because echal was the west. So you stood up by Mizmor to David, you already were fa facing west. So of course nobody turned around by boy b'shalom because you were already facing west so this guy had come to america and he saw by boy b'shalom everyone turns so he thought oh they for sure know better than the persians right so he came in iran and imagine 200 people are standing towards the the west towards the echal and this guy standing in front of the shul right and by boy b'shalom he turns around and he's looking at everyone you know the guy that's going on highway the in the opposite way and he thinks why everyone is going the wrong way yeah. He's looking at everyone. It's like, oh. and we, and we were laughing. I was like, you know, he's missing the shulchan aruch in Siman Sadi Dalit, right? Now, this is not really mentioned in Siman Sadi Dalit, the the kabbalistic thing of um, of uh, of the echal. But nevertheless, uh, it's important to know where the echal is and where to daven. And now you have many questions that we have to answer, right? For instance, there is a specific shul in town that they have three minyanim. Each one of the minyanim has a different echal, different direction. One of them is the, the, the least significant minyan is correct, it's to, towards the east, right? The, the main minyan is towards the south, and the other big minyan is towards, toward, towards the north, the echal. Can you daven in such a minyan? Or would you have to you know, turn around, turn? Um, your side or your back to the hechal and daven towards the right direction, or can you just follow the tzibur and, and do the hechal? What is the halacha in, in, in those scenarios? And this is in a more than uh, I could think of another shul uh, that they're, they also have two, um, two minyanim. Their weekday minyan is towards the east, like it should be, and the Shabbat minyan, which is everyone, where everyone comes is exactly the opposite is towards the west so again many times this happens depending on what building they they buy it's not not every building not everyone could afford building a building from scratch to the, so sometimes you, the main minyan becomes the auditorium of uh, of a place that you had or whatnot and it just works out in this way that you you know you have it in in in, in that Thing and you can't really change it. It's too expensive and too impractical to change the thing. So it's not mutar or asur. It's something that we're going to be discussing. So says the Shkharu. If you're standing in Chutzlaris, then you direct your attention, your direction towards Eres Israel. Depending on where Eres Israel is going to be, sometimes it's east, sometimes it's west, sometimes it's uh, you know is a, a diagonal. It's not exactly east or west. It's like northeast or southeast or southwest or south you know uh, you know south. So that is the dalacha vechaven. It's not only that, but you should also have kavara Yerushalayim. In your mind, again, it's very difficult. You're standing in Los Angeles, in New York, and so it's easy to direct your, your body towards Yerushalayim. But, Yerushalayim. but Eretz Yisrael is so small that, well, Yerushalayim versus Eretz Yisrael is the same thing, right? You can't do more than just directing yourself towards Eretz Yisrael. So then the rest of the job you do in your mind is say, I am, of course, standing towards Eretz Yisrael, but my kavanah is I'm standing towards Yerushalayim. And not only that, I'm standing towards Harabayit, towards the Makom Mikdash. And not only that, I'm standing in front of Kodesh HaKodashim, in front of where the, the manifestation of Hashem's presence and connection with the world out down here would, would manifest. You know, Hashem would speak 
a kiruvim from in between on top of kaporet rather mal kaporet in between the kiruvim that's where the connection of shamayim va'aris the connection of Hakadosh Baruch with his nation would would, would come then the Shlomo Melech says um, this is in a beautiful tefillah that Shlomo Melech uttered when he finished building the Beit Hamikdash the first Beit Hamikdash these are psukim that are in Melachim Aleph. In uh, starting really from Perek Hey and on, but still Perek Zayin and Het, that's, that's where it is. And he says, mm -hmm. Every Tefillah, and Mari Jiktili, Rabbi Yosef Jiktili, and his uh, Kabbalistic Sefer, he, he explains how every Tefillah that you have in anywhere in the world, regardless if you're a Jew or a Gentile, it goes through the land toward Eretz Israel, goes to Makoma Mikdash, and from there it goes, Shabbat Shara Shamaim. That place is Shara, it's the gate of heaven. All the tefillot go there and then they go up. That's how he explains, he says, why the tefillot of Chutzas are much harder to get accepted because he has to go through so many kilipot of different malachim, different kochot of different lands. Like the Gemara says in Masechet Ketuvot, Tavkuf Yud Aleph, the Gemara there says that Kol Adar Bechutzlaares, anyone that lives in Chutzlaares, Kemi Domer Kemi Lemi She'en Lo Eloah. It's like someone that doesn't have a God, right? What does that mean? Well, you don't have a daven to the same Hashem. He says, but your shefa that you accept is through the malachim of that land, right? Every Eretz Israel is directly under Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Other lands are under their own malach. So your shefa is funneled through that that spiritual pipe, and that's like you know you're not directly so to speak connected to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. And that was very much goes together with what Marie Jiktilia says about the tefillot. But it's important to to know that that's why you have to direct yourself towards Yerushalayim, towards Eretz Yisrael, towards Yerushalayim, towards Makoma Mikdash and Kodesh Hakodashim. So that's when, when you're outside Eretz Yisrael. If you're standing in Eretz Yisrael, Yachsir Panav Keneged Yerushalayim. Then, regardless of where you are, you turn yourself to Yerushalayim. So, if, therefore, if you're in Tzafon, if you're in nor northern cities of Eretz Yisrael, you daven to south. If you're in south, then you daven to north. If you are, um, you know, in east, you daven to west. West, you daven to east, right? And anywhere in between, you'll be in diagonal, right? The core element is you, you turn your face to Yerushalayim. And says the Shukha Aruch, the rest of it you do in your mind that I am standing in front of Mikdash and Kodesh HaKodashim. Hayaomet Yerushalayim. If you are standing already in Yerushalayim, then you turn your direction towards, um, towards the Mikdash, the place of the, the Makoba Mikdash, and then you have Kavana in your mind that it's not just the Mikdash that I'm facing, but I am turning my attention and the Kabbalah towards Kodesh HaKodashim. And of course, if you're standing in the Beit HaMikdash, Bezat Hashem, soon, if you're standing in the Beit HaMikdash, then you daven towards the, kap the Kaporet. Machzir Panav le Kaporet. You daven towards the... Now this is actually very important because you have to note that there is a machlok, we're, gonna, we're out of time right now, this is all exciting stuff that we have to discuss, but there's a machlok at where exactly Kodesh HaKodashim was. Is it under where the, the, um, the, the dome stone is the, uh, right now, the, the Al-Aqsa? Is uh, that the makom of Kodesh HaKodashim, or was it more to the right? And the Nafkamina is, when you go to Kotel Amaravi, which you know, everyone goes, do you dive in straight to the Kotel, or do you t tilt yourself to the left? That depends directly on this. And there it does make a difference of a good few degrees, because you're, like, you know, a few hundred feet away. It's not that much. So if it was a few hundred feet to the, to the right, then you're going to be a few degrees um, tilted to the right, and you'll be davening straight to the Kotel. But if it's Al-Aqsa, the, the Dome of the Rock, then you're going to be you have to dive into the left, really, because that's Beit HaKodesh HaKodashim. So this, you know, I think the Minhag basically is, it's hard to say that, but the Minhag is that people dive in straight. You don't see a whole lot of people diving to the left, really, when they go there, you know, unless they want to become rich. But, but uh, you know, which again, there it's not really, 
Oh, you have to be a chacham because that's you're standing in ma'arav. Okay, it's, it's, a, it's a little different, but but nevertheless, um, that that's one of the nafkaminas that he makes where your kavana is going to lie. These are all items that Bezat Hashem we will be discussing in the days to come. Hazak beruch.